where do I find good virtual assistants? I'm gonna show you behind the curtain what we do at our agency, where do we find good virtual assistants, all the platforms that we use, the pros and cons of each of them. You can go to companies that give you a person that you can bring on board, that you train them, that they grow with you, that they develop that brand loyalty towards you and your company. One of these companies is of course our company, HireTrainVA.com. We hire and we train VAs for your company. That's why the name, HireTrainVA.com. So if you're ready, let's get right into it. Hi everyone and welcome to the show Built with VAs. My name is Valentina Brega, I will be your host. And in today's episode, I want to tackle one of the most frequently asked questions that I get. Where do I find good virtual assistants? So I'm gonna show you behind the curtain what we do at our agency, where do we find good virtual assistants, all the platforms that we use, the pros and cons of each of them, so that you can make the right decision for your business. So if you're ready, let's get right into it. Number one, if you're looking to get people in the Philippines, start with onlinejobs.ph. Again, onlinejobs.ph, this is a very popular website, so this is one of the pros. It is a very popular website, both for people hiring and for people looking for a job. So you will have a lot of virtual assistants, there's a lot of traffic on the website. So again, if we talk about the pros, good traffic, uh, very easy to find people, they have a very good search, bar so you can find exactly the position you're looking for. What about the cons? The cons are that because there are so many people, a lot of those virtual assistants that apply are not of good quality. I would say when we use that source, probably 5% of the people that apply are actually being considered for an interview with our company. So you will get a lot of messages from applicants. Your email will be flooded with applicants and most of them will unfortunately not be good. So you have really have to know specifically what you're looking for and communicate that in your ad. But even so, there's so many people that apply generically to every job opening right there and um, you will get some of those candidates as well. But it's worth a try. All right, the second option that we look at is websites such as uh, freelancer.com or upwork.com. What I like about these websites is you usually get a better quality of people, more, more skilled people. Um, however, it is more expensive. If on onlinejobs.ph you can find someone, again, depending on the task, but let's say something basic, some, someone to help you with admin tasks around the office, you could technically find someone for as low as $3 an hour. On Upwork and on freelancer.com, you don't really find that those prices. But again, you usually find more skilled people. One of the cons for using these platforms is, I would say Upwork and freelancer.com is probably best suited for uh, project basis work, not so much for long-term work. So see if that makes sense to you. And along with that, the third option that we look at is Fiverr. And I do put it separately because what I like about Fiverr is uh, it is a very popular uh, website. Uh, there's again, a lot of good talent worldwide, not just in one specific country, it, it's, it's, it's international. And what I like about Fiverr.com is that you can actually see samples of people's work before you decide to, to make a decision of hiring them. Not only that, but it's super easy to get in touch with a freelancer. Uh, you can see uh, different packages, what they charge for, so you can make the right decision. Again, the con is probably one of the few ones, but the con is that if you're looking for someone long-term, this is not the place I would be looking for. So let's say if you're looking for someone to edit a couple of pictures or to um, help with some illustrations or edit a video or make some corrections or make an intro for your podcast or outro or whatever it is, that would be a good place to start. It's a one-time project. You can see the reviews of that freelancer. You can see how, how well they communicate. So that's definitely one of the options to look at. But if you're looking for someone to generate leads for you, let's say you're a real estate company and you need, you need a cold caller or you need someone to send uh, bulk text messages, that would not be a place I would look at for people like that. That would be more suitable for onlinejobs.ph and the next one that I will be talking about shortly here. Source number four is Facebook groups. And this is also a very good way to find good talent. I, if you go to Facebook and if you just type groups, virtual assistants, there are a ton 
and I mean it, a ton of Facebook groups dedicated to virtual assistants. Uh, so what are the pros? The pros are, of course, you have a huge variety of groups. You can find the right person there. I wouldn't say easily because that's one of the cons and we'll address it shortly, but you can definitely find, find people there too who would be interested. Another pro is that you can look for people in a specific country. Of course, it's free, it's Facebook, so that's all, always a plus. But let's say you're looking for virtual assistants in Mexico or virtual assistants in Costa Rica or in the Philippines or Egypt or whatever it is you're looking for, and you will always find groups dedicated to that topic. Now, what are the cons? The cons are that even though you might put in the ad, and I highly encourage you to do it, put in the ad, please apply using this link or please apply using this email, chances are a lot of people will actually DM you or will comment on your posts, so your Facebook will be flooded with messages. It's a little frustrating, um, and but that would be another way to um, screen candidates, right? If you specifically put it in the ad, only apply to uh, this website and no one else will be considered. And if you're still getting DMs, well, it's easy to ignore them. It's just that it, it it's not as organized. And especially if you're using your personal Facebook, uh, you will be mixed with personal messages. It, it's just a little tricky, a little confusing. Another con from Facebook groups is that um, we found a lot of people who don't have good English, uh, people who didn't meet our criteria. I would say when we hire for our company, we only accept about 5% of the people that apply to work with us. 95, 96% are not good enough for our company. So for whatever reason, right? And, and depending on the position we're looking to fulfill. In the Facebook groups, we have not found those super strong A players um, or it takes time. I remember when we tried to find someone for one of the positions in our company, it took two or three rounds until we found really, really good people. So you never know when the right person is gonna see your ad. It is possible we have found superstars, but it just takes time. And from our findings, well, everything actually takes time if you do it on your own. What we found is that it can take up to 100 hours of your time to find the right person for your company. But again, Facebook is free, uh, lots of applicants. Uh, one thing that I would say with Facebook groups, when you're looking to join a group, the first thing that I look at also is the engagement rate. When people post something, post an ad, I, I'm looking at the number of comments and the number of likes or shares or you know just how active that post is. I have seen Facebook groups with thousands of members, tens of thousands, 20,000 people but the engagement rate was almost non-existent. So that's not the type of group that I want to post in because it's just wasting your time posting and probably you won't get any replies out of that. All right, and let's move on to the next source. The next source that we look at is LinkedIn and I like this platform. The pros are that, again, you have more skilled people. Um, you can see the resume, you can see the articles they write, It's you can see the testimonials. So it's a very good platform. Obviously you have to have a professional picture on LinkedIn. So it's a very good source to look for good candidates. The cons are that probably the candidate that you will really like, um, most likely they already have a job. So. I'm not sure how, how available they will be or how open they are to, uh, to new opportunities. However, it's always worth a try reaching out to them and uh, saying, hey, are you happy in your work? Do you know anybody who, if you're not available, do you know anybody like you who would be available to work for us? Uh, we got a lot of responses. We haven't gotten anyone yet who would be available. Um, but, you know, th there, there are ways in LinkedIn to search for just for open for work. But you would miss out on a lot of good candidates depending on the role. So here's, the, here's how I think. I think that if you're looking for a high profile role, um, LinkedIn is a good source to go. For example, you need a very good executive assistant, you need a recruiter, or you need that critical thinking part for your business, that would be a good platform to look at. If you're just looking to fulfill a position that is very basic, like upload the invoices in a spreadsheet or uh, organize some documents or some files or something very basic, LinkedIn might be a little too sophisticated for that role. I would probably go for that role. I would go to Facebook groups and I would go to onlinejobs.ph. So yeah, that's LinkedIn. And let's look at the next one. The next source, I forgot what number it is, but that's actually something that we use a lot in our agency, it's referrals. 
And I like it probably the most because uh, out of everything that I've talked so far, because if you have a good person in your network, a good virtual assistant, chances are they probably know someone else who is just as good as they are. I always say that birds of the feather flock together. So if they are good, then they have standards. They know what it is you're looking for. They know how to work right. They have the right work ethic. They, they have the loyalty that you're looking for. There's a reason you like that person or they have the skill set. So most likely they will be able to recommend who someone who is just as good as they are or maybe better, but you know, they wouldn't recommend someone who is who is who isn't up to their own standards. So that's what I like about referrals. Uh, reach out to them, it's always worth a try. You can pay a referral fee if you find someone good. So that's always a pro. What are the cons for referrals? We haven't seen many cons for referrals, but I would probably say we didn't get as many referrals as we would have liked, even though we have a very strong international network. Uh, but the ones that we did get, they were pretty solid. So not a lot of people, especially if you work, look, if you work as a virtual assistant, this is a pretty lonely job. You work from home, you don't go in an office, you don't develop as many relationships with other VAs as you would in a traditional job setting. So if you can, if you are likely to have someone recommended, chances are they will be good, but it is a slim chance because of that factor, because working as a VA can be lonely. And the last source that I'm going to mention today is, of course, a professional company. You can go to companies that manage the VAs for you, so you only get the leads or you only get the final product that, that you're looking for, or you can go to companies that give you a person that you can bring on board, that you train them, that they grow with you, that they develop that brand loyalty towards you and your company. So that's also an option as well. Uh, one of these companies is, of course, our company, HireTrainVA.com. We hire and we train VAs for your company. That's why the name, HireTrainVA.com. And we do direct hire, which means we will find the right person for you because we want that person to be loyal to your company. We want them to grow with you, to be part of your company, to see your mission, to see your vision. Uh, and so you share your culture and you really develop that relationship with your virtual assistants. Most successful companies that we've seen, that we've worked with, that's exactly how they do it. That's exactly how they become successful. They don't treat their VAs as freelancers. They treat them as part of their own company that they can train, they can grow, and they can uh, develop the business with. So if that's something that you're interested in, uh, check out our website, hiretrainva.com. What are the pros? Of course, we've already been through all the whole process. We already know the ins and outs. I have a super dedicated team of virtual assistants who are amazing. Really, I could talk all day about my wonderful team and I hope everybody has such a wonderful team as I do. But we have a team that is dedicated to recruiting, to finding, to interviewing, to screening people, to finding those four or 5% of good VAs that we can present to you. So that's the pros. The con is, of course, uh, well, it is, uh, it is a service, it is a business, so there's a cost attached to it. But you really have to decide what would you rather do? Would you rather spend time and effort and energy? And like I said, sometimes it can take up to 100 hours of your work finding that one person. Or would you rather outsource that to a company who will take care of your needs, will provide replacements if necessary, who are constantly keeping a pipeline of good VAs uh, available to present to you, right? So these are the pros and cons of going with any agency. And uh, I hope that you found a lot of good information today. Um, whether you want to hire on your own or if you wanna go with us, it's totally up to you. Once you find a good VA, don't just stop here. You have to interview them, you have to screen them, uh, you have to uh, bring them on board, share your culture, share your values. And if you're interested in finding out more, I will leave a link to one of our courses in the show notes where we go granular into exactly what our process looks like, how we interview, what questions we ask in the interview, what kind of tests we give people, uh, how to really identify the right virtual assistant for your company. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely check the show notes. Thank you so much for joining me today. It was a blast. I hope I gave you a lot of good value. Go ahead and, and put it in practice. And trust me, once you hire your first VA, you're not gonna look back. So thank you for joining me today and I'll see you in the next show.